Welcome back to Country Conversations, your favorite country music podcast. My name is Joey, and as always, I'm joined by... Hey man, it's Chris here tonight. What's going on, man? Dude, not a whole lot. Just staying busy. Uh, ton Listening of fun. to music? Listen to some music, been to some good shows over the past few months. We didn't really talk about it on our last episode, but gosh, I can't even think of all the shows I've been to over the past few months. Uh, Aldine, I, I yeah. mentioned the farm tour on the last episode. Yeah. Uh, man, going to see Alan Jackson next weekend. That's right. We're going to be there, man. It's going to be a good one. We got Bailey Zimmerman tickets for November. Yep. And I think that's going to probably end the year for me. Bailey on uh, November 5th in Ohio. I got Luke Combs. The second to last weekend of October, I've got the Judd's last show. Well, it's you know it's it's a tribute show now with Winona and Faithfield, Martina McBride. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna be a good one. Yeah, uh, we got Alan Jackson. I've got Keith Urban here in Charleston. I don't know, man. It's crazy. I'm I'm you ready. Got a solid Let's lineup go. to round out the year, man. <laughs> Let's go. I'm ready. You've Always. probably been to 30 shows this year at, at the Man, end of it. Man, I have, I have made up for lost time. This, Dude, you know, just... These last couple of years, we, we weren't able to hit quite as many as we wanted to, but I've definitely made up for it. So. Oh, same. <laughs> yeah. I was talking I'm, to my I, wife. I'm like, i got, I got to take a breather next year maybe and just uh, uh, go, you go to the local that. shows. I, uh, I said that this year, that. didn't I? <laughs> we, you've already got, we've already got tickets to the Luke Combs Stadium show in Nashville at Nissan. That's going to be an all-timer. Trying um, to get some for Kojo, and don't yeah. judge me, my Kentucky people, I love you, in Louisville next year. Um, <laughs> or Louisville, or Louisville, or however you, however you prefer to say it, but I'm trying to get tickets right. to that one city in Kentucky where everybody disagrees on how to pronounce it. <laughs> so we'll see. That's and awesome, man. Maybe country concert in Ohio for a day or two. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm curious to- Last year, I went to Country Fest, and you went to Country Concert. And yeah. then this year, you went back to Country Concert. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious to see who Country Fest gets next year. Because I think um, they had uh, – did they have Wallen last year? Or was it Combs? They had wa- both. Yeah, both, right? Well, one last time. year, both of them had Combs, and then this year, both of them had Wallen. That's um, what I thought. So I wonder if they're going to try to repeat with any, either of them or just try to find Probably not. I don't I wouldn't know. think I so. Think th- yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if it's if it's similar to what Country Fest did. You know, yeah. I mean, people in the groups are going crazy. But it, you know, like I keep telling people, like you can't book Combs and Wallen every year. Like you know, you gotta. Right. There's other people out there, and you know, those the people that run those festivals, they know what they're doing. Like they, you know, yeah, you might sell thirty, thirty, thirty five thousand tickets to a Combs or Wallen show. But you're probably still going to sell twenty to twenty five thousand, even if you have somebody like the the people that they announced this year. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, so, that, I mean, it's still going to be a good time. Oh, absolutely, man. I mean, even at the uh, that Luke Bryan farm tour, dude, there was I would guesstimate twenty five to twenty eight thousand people there for that. It's a lot of people on the field, man. Dude, it was insane. <laughs> I I couldn't believe how many. I did not expect it to be that big of an event, and there was like food vendors there and everything. I was like, this is crazy. It was like a Kind of like a smaller scale country concert as far as like the full experience, but it was like country concert, the festival, not a country yeah. concert, but it was wild, man. But That's awesome, though. Tonight, guys, we've got a fun one. We've got uh, one of our favorites that dropped an album earlier this year back in February, I want to say. It was uh, February, or no, it was uh, March 18th is when this record dropped. It is a album review and ranking of Shot Glass by Randall King. Oof. So that's all we've got tonight for you, folks. And uh, if you've listened to the show before or follow us on social media, you know we're huge fans of Randall. We are. Uh, some of you may have not heard of him yet. If you haven't, please go check him out. He is, uh, many people compare him to like a modern day George Strait. Uh, not necessarily the same exact voice or anything, but very, very, Randall's very traditional. He's a Texas guy, cowboy country, all that good stuff. So um, definitely go check him out if you haven't. Absolutely, man. I know. I know. I saw him back in the spring, summer with oh. uh, when he opened for Clay Walker and Tracy Lawrence, and I know you just saw him again for the second or third time. So yeah, we've both seen him live this year, and he's he's awesome live. That that was actually one of the shows I forgot to mention a little bit ago. I went down to Nashville and saw Randall play at the Nashville Palace, and that was really cool. It was That's it the, was so easy to get up front, dude. The, it, he sold it out; like the place was packed, but nobody was really like hoarding the stage i get i mean there was like the people in the front row that didn't want to move but i got there like super late didn't line up or anything and i was like two rows back 
<laughs> from the state. It was sweet. He he is an amazing live performer, and um, I think it's just a matter of time before he like fully takes off. Absolutely, man. I mean, he's you know, I mean, he's already got a a super hardcore fan base in. Uh, Texas and now reaching out to Nashville. He's been touring all over. He's still a super young guy. He's got a ton of music out. And uh, I I just feel like he's one of those people that if you love country music and you listen to his music, you're going to love it. Like, I cannot imagine anybody not liking his music if you really love country music. Right. And and he's just a genuine guy. You know, we've both met him a couple times and just super nice guy. Very thankful for what he's got going on. You can just you can just tell he's just genuine. Absolutely. And he writes about real stuff too, and I think that's super important. But I, we covered his EP a, a little ways back, his underground EP that you can only buy at concerts. If you guys are interested, go check that episode out. It was yep. a few months a few months back. The EP is called Honky Tonk BS, but you can't get it anywhere unless you go to a live show and buy it on CD. It's pretty cool. You know, in today's world, streaming can be kind of annoying, but it's a cool thing to give to like the hardcore fans that buy tickets and go out to the shows. And who knows, we, we might get a deluxe album of Shot Glass one day with a couple of those tracks on it. Because he's been playing yeah. a couple of them at the live show. Has he? Yeah, it wouldn't yeah. surprise me if they if and he the, adds it to uh, uh, streaming the, pretty soon. The one I remember that he played in Nashville was uh, In the Picture. You remember that one? I, I think I oh, yeah. you listened yeah, to it because I've one. seen that CD. But um, yeah, that was a good one. But let's give a little background on Randall. I don't think we did this on the last episode. I could be wrong. So if I'm if you're hearing me repeat myself, apologize. But this is just some information I found online. Give you guys yeah, a little background on Randall. So yeah, Randall grew up in a small town, Hereford, Texas. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. And uh, his dad was a trucker. Randall talks about that a lot. He mentions like life on the road with his dad and being in the truck, listening to country music like Merle Haggard, being an influence and everything. But he moved to Lubbock in 2009 and went to school at Texas Tech. And while at college, he heard local acts and just fell in love and wanted to start playing himself. But I've heard him do interviews where he said, like, I've been singing as long as I can remember. And he would sing so much, his family would be like, come on, Randall, like, calm down, let them sing it. (laughs) So, I mean, I've heard him talk in interviews and stuff and other podcasts and where he's told that story. I think that's funny, but... A couple years after starting at Texas Tech, he transferred to South Plains College and started studying music production while also playing music of his own. And then he formed his band, the Randall King Band, and released an album, Old Dirt Road. And then he decided to go solo with with a more traditional country sound versus an Americana sound and released the EP, Another Bullet, in 2016, followed by a self-titled album, Randall King, in 2018. And Tugging on My Heartstrings was a single from that album. And then he also released the EP Leanna with Warner once he got signed to Warner Music. And that was named after his sister. A lot of people look at Randall as being like a neo-traditional country musician as well. Kind of like we mentioned Party in our last episode. People kind of look at Randall in the same light. He actually recently made his Grand Ole Opry debut March 15th of this year, 2022. Yep. And he's just been crushing it. This uh, He dropped the album, I believe it was on March 18th. That's what I've got on my notes here, but I'm going to go fact check myself really quick because I put these notes together a little ways back, and I just, I'm for some reason, second-guessing myself. But, uh, yeah, March 18th of this year. So he debuted at the Grand Ole Opry the same week that his album dropped, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, this, this project is really good. We both love Randall. Like we've mentioned, we've both seen him live. The one complaint, I guess I would say, that I have on the project is that a lot of these songs had been released before the album came out. Yeah. Um, whether they were on the EP, the Leanna EP, or they were dropped as singles kind of leading up to the project. And I think that's a, a common complaint that you and I both have, <laughs> that artists just release yeah, music too I mean, pr- prematurely for... these days. But I get it with streaming. I mean, it, it's just... Yeah, and with good. somebody like Randall, that's they're still trying to build and build and build. You know, mm-hmm. it makes more sense for somebody like him because you know they're sure. trying to they're trying to catch lightning in a bottle with a song. You know what I mean? So they're trying sure. to you know if you release them all at once, then some of them get lost in the shuffle. You know, for for somebody like Combs or Wallen, you don't they don't need to worry about that anymore. Right. <laughs> but for somebody like Randall, you know, I, I guess it makes sense to you know release a couple and and then a couple months later you know space it out a little bit. I forgive them a little bit more when it comes to to Randall and. Uh, Absolutely. Is he? Man. I think he's. I think he signed to Warner. Right? Is that the major? Yeah. The major uh, label? He's yeah. On? Warner Music, Nashville. Yeah, yeah. Warner Music. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a big label. I mean, 
It is. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, Warner Music Nashville, and he signed it. Was it? I think it was 2020, 2021, maybe. I, I could be yeah. wrong on that. Within the last two years, I think. Yeah, this project's good, man. I think all the songs go together. Randall's very honky tonk, like he is. Yeah. I mean, there's literally a song on here called "You and a Honky Tonk." So I mean, he's <laughs> very, very country. Hey, cowgirl's he is. another one. But again, he he writes meaningful like real music and that's just uh, something that I really dig about an artist and um, a lot of these songs are really really good songs and but the you know Around Forever which he wrote about his, his sister and his cover of I'll Fly Away um, those were on the Leanna EP uh, I'm trying to think Hey that's Hey Cowgirl Okay, hey, I, th- I was thinking Hey Moon made it on the record, but I think that one's just yeah, on Hey the Moon EP. was on the was on just on the EP. Yeah. yeah, so that one didn't make the record, but there's a ton of good songs on here, man. I don't want to spoil my favorites too quick because we're gonna rank them, but yeah. Um, what did what did you think about this album overall and everything? Oh man, I mean it's like you said. I mean some some of the stuff was older. I know I know both of us had uh, a couple. You know, a couple of these tracks that we you definitely had around forever, and I had "I'll Fly Away" on our on our um, year in top ten last year. Um, so some of them have been around for a while, but you know, it's just it. I it's probably it probably won't be in my top two or three of the year, but it might. But it might be. I mean, it's I mean, it's a it's a really good put together project. It's one of those ones that he literally could play it from start to finish live, and the the hardcore Randall fans would love it. Um, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a, uh, you know, a bad track on, on the album. Yeah, man. No, I'm with you hundred percent. I've, yeah. I've listened to this thing all the way through since March. I, I can't even tell you how many times <laughs> yeah. a lot. It's a, it's a great, very well put together album. And, uh, yeah. And I don't, I couldn't even guess how many times I'll listen to it. There's a few on here that I really, really, really like, and we'll always go back to the, Oh yeah. Uh, that being said, sure. man. Let's go ahead and jump into our top five off this record, Shot Glass, by Randall King. Let's do it, man. Yeah, number five, I've got Record High. Oof, that's a good one. I it's, think it's a, that might be the, is that the lead track? I think, it, uh, yeah, I think it was, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know off the top of my head, but yeah, that one is, as I like to say, it was, is a jam, and uh, yeah, it's very honky-tonk. <laughs> I that's love awesome. it, man. Yeah, I love it. What about you, man? What'd you have at five? Uh, I've got you and a honky tonk at number five. <laughs> nice, <laughs> which is kind of similar to record high, but um, you know, it's sawdust and draft beer and uh, cigarettes. <laughs> you can just smell the honky tonk when when Randall is singing these songs. Oh, dude, absolutely! It's very. Uh, there's a lot of good imagery in there. You've seen him twice in a honky tonk. I saw him in a small arena as an opener. So I haven't really got the full uh, honky tonk Randall experience yet, but I was supposed to have seen him open for Kojo at our state fair, which was oh. going to be probably my show of the year. And it got canceled because of, uh, cause of COVID. Yeah, um, I remember that. That was a bummer. I'm hoping I'm, I'd say there's a good chance they've already rescheduled that for next year. So I'm hoping that I'm hoping that we'll, we'll get to catch that next year. Which is that not to get off topic again, but that kind of, that turned out to be a decent lineup. It was a uh, Priscilla, Block and Dylan Carmichael, right? They came yeah, out for, for free. free, for free. Yeah, yeah that's, so that's not a, bad. That's a heck of a shit. That, and they and they rescheduled that like in two days. Right? Yeah, it I was mean, like they, a two day turnaround. They canceled it like on on a Monday, and we were, it was a Thursday night. So yeah, they had like two or three days. Yeah, and to crazy. get those two, I mean, for a free show, you can't beat that. But I definitely, no, you know, you were super pumped for Randall and Kojo, and I was like heartbroken. I couldn't make it. Well, you got a number four. Number four, man. I've got uh, Middle of Nowhere Church. Oof. Such a good song. Tell very, us about very that Very, very good one. song, man. Uh, another one of them, you know, you guys are avid listeners now. I love the sad stuff. And basically a song of reminiscing on a, another relationship that didn't work. And basically the, the lyric is, we're right there all along. I was 90 miles of driving through her memory when it hit me like a middle of nowhere church. And that's just a really uh, good metaphor analogy whatever you want to say about how he was just kind of driving through thinking about whatever and then out of nowhere it hit him like a ton of bricks that you know he's missing his girl or whatever and i love it man it's a, it's a great song yeah and it's that's an amazing song reminiscing on the, the 
and wishing kind of how he could go back and fix things and all that in the relationship, and it's really, really good. That's right, man. What do you have at number four? Number four, I've got um, Can't You Feel How That Sounds. Oh, that's a jam. That's kind of like his love. version of the kind of love we make. Yeah, man. It's, <laughs> I mean, they they haven't really been able to catch – you know, fire with him on radio yet, but this one just sounds like something that should be made for radio. You know, oh, yeah. like some of his stuff is probably a little too honky tonk, maybe a little too slow. You know, I mean, he's he's not really pandering to radio on a right. lot of this stuff, but this one, you know, just feels like it should. It sh- they should be able to get a hit out of this one. Um, I agree. It just feels good. You know, I mean, there's nothing nothing earth shattering about this song, but he just you know his lyric and. Uh, and the way that delivery. he sings it, just yeah, just the delivery is is perfect. I just I, I go back to this one quite a bit. Same man, and I'll tell you that's why I've got it at number three. Oof, there you I go. I love it, man. I think it's a great one, even live when he he's getting to that last part where he's really kind of I wouldn't say belting, but really hitting those heavy high notes or getting into it. I don't even know. It's uh, let me start that over. Uh, even at the live show, man, hit the delivery on this is just absolutely phenomenal. And it, it's a great song. It's kind of the the sexy I miss my woman song. I'm out on the road, but we're we're talking lovey dovey on the phone and can't you feel how that sounds? And it's a very, very good song. Yeah, it's a good one. Love it. What'd you have at number three? Number three I have what you had at number four. Uh Middle of Nowhere Church. Well look at that. We flip flopped them. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that, Joe. I know, right? What uh tell us about that one, man. Why'd you have that one at number three? Oh man! I, well, f- I don't, when I first heard it, I've got a bunch of family that lives down in Virginia, and uh, kind of way just you know out in the country, out in the cornfields, and uh, it's funny because you know most of my life we didn't have GPS, and so you know they had to give us directions, <laughs> and and uh, there's this old white wooden country church that sits out in the middle of these cornfields, and you take a left at this church and just drive for about 10 more minutes. And when I first heard this song, it just put me out in the middle of those cornfields near that church. So, Mm. you know, I just had, I just had that connection to it and I could feel, you know, just the, just the, you know, the, the visuals of, of that song. And, uh, I mean, it's, this is just stone cold country. And like you said, it's a, it's a good one. Most definitely, man. I, I can't remember life before GPS. So, (laughs) <laughs> I, I, survive, I can man. unfortunately <laughs> i think i went like just a couple of years of driving if that without a gps because i i would i would not survive without it it'd be hard to go back now wouldn't it <sighs> man map quest printing off directions and all that <laughs> golly that was rough enough let alone not even having that it was man that's funny. i remember we didn't have a printer for a while and i had we had like dial up internet and i'd have to like go to map quest and write down the directions on a notepad <laughs> with a pencil it's crazy. Awesome. It's crazy. <laughs> don't miss those days. I do miss some parts of those days, but I don't miss that. That's right. But man, number two, I've got one of my fav- one of my all time favorites by Randall. Probably, yeah, definitely one of my all time favorites by him. Let alone just from this album. But uh, I've got around forever at number two. Oof. You love that one, man. You That's love a it. good one, man. That one that one hits home to me uh, definitely, and it is a basically an anthem about. You know, don't take people in your life for granted because they're not going to be there forever. That's why I had number two, man. What do you have at number two? I've got at number two what I'm assuming you've got at number one. So, number two, I've got Shot Glass. Oh, man, that's a, that is an amazing song. <laughs> Shoo-wee. That's a good one. And you, you, uh, I'll go that's ahead and one. spoil it. You were right, man. That's what I've got at number one, so we'll talk about it. Why'd you put it up there? Dude, that, when I heard that, man, I was like, holy crap. And it, it's it's a it's just a beautiful song, man. And about it's and if you watch the music video, it's even it hits even harder. And it's this guy at the bar, kind of drinking and reflecting on his life. And you know when he learned how to drive, when he fell in love, um, and just how how does all of that fit into a shot glass? And the way I interpreted it is that he's not just sitting there drinking to the sad stuff, but he's kind of just reflecting on youth and um, his first kiss, his first car, learning how to play Amazing Grace on his first guitar. And, you know, it says, tell me how does all that fit into a shot glass? So I don't think it's necessarily all 
sad because then he, you know, he gets into the part where he's with his wife or whatever. And then it, it says something like her first hello, her last goodbye. Now tell me, how does that, how does all that fit into a shot glass? And it's like, man, that's, that's sad, <laughs> but it is a pretty sad song overall. And uh, it is, it really is. And it's just really good. And I, and again, I, I listened to that behind the song thing that he did. And I guess I, I can't remember who wrote this, but he heard it. Like, I guess that his record told him or his management or whoever told him like, and again, I'm kind of paraphrasing cause I can't remember the exact story. So don't, don't judge me or hold it against me if I'm missing some of this folks. But, um, he, he said like his record told him they needed like an outside cut, like something he didn't write on just to like yeah. add into the mix. And he heard this and was like, man, you know, what's the chance of us like cutting that? And they were like, oh, no chance. Like that's going to, that's going to be on hold. They got to run it by, you know, so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. It was like all the heavy hitter, like legendary nineties guys and stuff. And they're like, there, there's no chance that we're, uh, we're going to get this. And he's like, okay, okay, whatever. So I guess when it came time to find that last song that he didn't write to put on the record, he was like, what about that shot glass song? Is that still available? And it just happened to be available. Oh, and wow. uh, he got to cut it and put it on the record. So I thought that was a pretty cool, like, behind the scenes. Named the record after it. Yeah. Yeah, the title track. It's crazy. A beautiful song, man. Super, super good. I've... I would not be surprised if when the Spotify numbers come out at the end of the year, if that's not my most listened to song this year. That's a good one, man. For sure, man. But that was my number one, y'all. What what did you have, number one? Number one, I've got, um, <laughs> it's a cover. It's from the EP. It's old. Um, but God, I love the way he sings this song. Number mm-hmm. one, I've got I'll Fly Away. Man, no kidding. That's that's another beautiful song, man. So good. Yeah, I mean that's you know that's one of the one of the absolute all time kind of religious slash country songs of you know probably the last hundred years, and they're at, you know almost everybody in music has sung this song at one time or the other, and uh, just the way that Randall does it is it's definitely my favorite version of the song. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I remember singing that song you know in church growing up, and it's so it's just kind of always been a, been a part of my life, been around, and he just absolutely kills this song. Love Dude, it so much. Absolutely. And uh, for him to be able to put out his rendition of it is awesome. I love it. it it's a tearjerker too, man. It is. Yeah, it's, it's It's very, it's way slowed down too, like compared to the traditional version. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the way he, yeah, absolutely. Deli- the delivery and who. Yeah. It's a good one, man. Definitely a classic all time song. And his rendition is definitely my favorite as well record all around man absolutely man i love it that's shot glass that's our that's our uh, top five from shot glass anyway we're gonna we're gonna rank this out of 10 man uh one to 10 what are you ranking shot glass by randall king mm, i'd give it an eight eight cool yeah you know what, you? what do you think I, i'm gonna join you and go with an eight as well yeah this is yeah. uh for a debut major label project i know it's not his first record but it's his first major label project i think it's definitely very solid yeah really is man. and he's got a lot of promise for the future of his career in country music for sure i, I think that i don't know what it's going to take really because i mean the guy tours like crazy i mean he's on a major label he puts out great music i don't know what's going to take for him to really catch fire but you know he's really just getting started honestly he's just got that kind of kind of style that he's you know he may become a huge star he might just keep kind of building his career like he has but he's going to be around for you know, like I hate, hate to make a pun out of the song title, but he's going to be around forever because <laughs> the people that love him really love him. Oh yeah, so, he's got a dime. He's, he's not going base. anywhere anytime soon. But cool guys, that's Shot Glass by Randall King. If you haven't heard it yet, go check it out. It's uh, definitely one you don't want to miss out on. That's right. But we appreciate y'all hanging out with us again, as always. All right, guys. Well, shoot us a DM on Instagram. You can even find us on TikTok, Facebook, all that good stuff, at Country Convos. Let us know what you think of this project. Um, Let us know if you've ever been to a Randall show, how you liked it. And, uh, yeah, that's going to do it, y'all. Until next time, keep it country and take care of each other.